All right, welcome everyone. Uh, we'll just give it another minute or so as we uh, have some folks that are joining us and, and logging on. Um, but thank you for joining and for uh, your interest in the Master of International Business program. Excited to have an opportunity to share a bit of uh, a bit of information with you about what I think is one of the real jewels of the MIB experience, and that being the Global Consulting Project. Um, so we'll get started in just a moment. Just a bit of housekeeping, maybe before we get started, we will be recording today's session. So everyone who registered will be receiving a copy of that recording. Also want to say that if you have specific questions or things that you joined today, really wanting to make sure you leave with in terms of insights or details about the program that we don't cover, definitely want to hear from you. So you can do that through the Q&A button that should be on your screen, and we will definitely find time for those questions before we wrap today. All right, so let's uh, let's get started. So as, uh, as I mentioned, welcome again. Thank you for being with us. It's always a great um, joy to talk about this program, and I'm excited today to have a great group of panelists to help me bring to life a little bit what I think is uh, one of the very unique and very applied and, and tactical aspects of the program, which is this global consulting project. So that's gonna be really the meat of what we're gonna talk about today, but certainly uh, we'll round that out with some details broadly about the program and the business school as well. So here's kind of the roadmap of where I'm hoping we will go. Again, we'll do some brief introductions, talk a little bit about what the Master of International Business degree is and why you might choose it for your graduate education, and then dive right into talking about the Global Consulting Project. We'll hear some insights from current students about their experience with the project course, talk a bit about how it fits into the program structure more broadly, and then wrap up with some insights and information from our application advisor on uh, admission requirements and next steps. So that's kind of the goal for our time together. So my name is Carrie Regan. I'm the director of the MIB program. I've served in this role for almost six years. And I have to say, as we kind of wrap up another semester, which just ended on Friday or Thursday, uh, it's just such a great reminder of what an honor and privilege it is to work with this program and our wonderful students. So again, very grateful to have some of them joining myself and my colleague, Carrie Frazier, who is our application advisor um, today. <clears throat> and, uh, and then you'll hear from, from both Shin and Daniel a little bit later, and I'm going to actually have them introduce themselves uh, to you and tell you a little bit about their journey into the program and kind of where they're at with their respective projects uh, as they sort of head into the final semester of the degree. So a little bit about the Master of International Business program. This, in my opinion, is one of our most unique offerings here at Smith. Uh, this is a master's degree that was really quite ahead of its time here in Canada. We've been running the MIB program for about 17 years. Uh, much, far, much earlier than maybe some of our other uh, business school colleagues, even across the continent, who decided to offer what we call an early career master's or master's degree that students can do directly following their bachelor education. It really is designed to provide students with an incomparable amount of business, uh, international business experience. That happens both in the classroom, as Daniel and Shin will talk to in terms of the global community of students that make up our cohort every year. And then of course, the immersive uh, global experience through exchange and double degree. And then of course, the opportunity to work with a globally dispersed team for the consulting project. We do feel that because of the uniqueness and the ability that students have to structure a degree and a program that aligns so specifically with their goals and passions, that it is a real opportunity to differentiate yourself to prospective employers, to really stand out in a crowded recruiting market, to talk about all the great stories um, and things that you've learned along the way. And so it's a real important focus for us to make sure that we embed all of the uniqueness throughout the student's journey. 
The program is designed to build on an undergraduate foundation in business. So all the students in the program have at least a foundational education in business studies, um, which Carrie can speak to in more detail as we get into the admission requirements. So you're not coming back to the beginning and starting at learning accounting and finance and those sort of fundamental business areas. You're really now talking more on a strategic level applying the learning, putting yourself in that decision-making seat through the use of cases and lots of experiential tools to really think about, you know, the type of leader that you want to be. We focus quite extensively on teams, as, uh, as both Daniel and Shen will share with you, and what does that mean in the context of our program. And then again, the consulting project, among many other things, is, uh, is what we refer to as experiential learning opportunities and giving our students the chance to learn by doing. So that's kind of the program in a nutshell uh, in terms of its focus uh, and some of what I think are the unique features. A lot of these speak to um, kind of the defining things that make our graduates what we think are different or uh, the Smith Edge. So what are the things that happen in the context of this program and inside this business school that help our students differentiate themselves as they take these their degree in education with them. Our team-based focus obviously gives students some really good insight into human dynamics and what does it mean to work and leverage a diverse set of skills and experiences to really drive performance in the work that you do. Certainly the adversity that comes from you know, working with difference day in and day out. And then of course, navigating a global environment through not only in some cases making the move to Canada, but then beyond that, going to another country uh, as part of your studies. And then certainly lots of focus on experience and exploration and giving students a chance again to learn by doing. So that really is, I think, the, the dimensions of ability that we're trying to instill in our students and that I can confidently say after six years working with uh, students in this program and many more working with students across other programs that um, you know, our, our graduates can confidently say they lead with these types of skills. So what is the Global Consulting Project? Well, <clears throat> this is a core requirement for all students completing MIB. Again, it's that focus on experiential learning. It's the opportunity to experience working collaboratively in a globally dispersed uh, virtual environment. You know, we've just come, I wouldn't say out of, but certainly maybe on the other side of a global pandemic. And I can say that, you know, again, this is a degree that was well ahead of its time because we introduced a course in virtual teams um, about five years before the pandemic hit. Um, because we knew that the future of business was going to require students to work in globally dispersed teams. So it was important for us to incorporate that. Um, and then obviously really looking at the real world application of classroom content. <clears throat> and the Global Consulting Project is designed to do just that. It's designed to take not only what students learn here, but what they've learned prior to that and giving them a real world situation to apply that learning. So students work with a live client on a key international or other business issue that they're facing. And the goal is to conduct primary research, to do some strong, deep analysis in order to add some valuable contributions and solutions to that client. And so students go through all the processes of developing and forming their team. They go through the acquisition of, a, of gaining that client <clears throat> and then several iterations of the project with an advisor to make sure they're on the right track and then ultimately deliver a presentation and a, a final report outlining all of the work. So it is very much a, a consulting project and students will graduate <clears throat> really with being able to say that they've got some real world work experience, which <clears throat> for students doing this degree at early stages of their career is incredibly valuable. So our project approach, um, at the timelines, we this is a degree or a, pro, or a project rather that actually spans all three semesters of the MIB experience. And so students do probably the most work through the winter term when they're really diving deep into their analysis um, and trying to sort of curate some 
insights for their client, but it actually gets introduced in the fall semester. And that's where students work to lock down a client to um, you know, make sure that the, the project that they that they're working on actually aligns with the assi uh, course outline and that it meets the objectives of that course. And uh, they get assigned an advisor. Um, and then obviously there's a specific course outline that identifies the grading and the support along the way. So um, I'm going to have Shin and Daniel speak in just a moment, but maybe they can focus a little bit on how their teams have sort of navigated some of these, uh, this particular approach um, as well. Some of the types of projects, and I think what's really great about this course is that students' teams actually have quite a bit of autonomy in determining who they want to work with, what kind of industry they want to focus on. <clears throat> and for some, that can be quite overwhelming. For others, you know, it gives them the leeway to leverage their own personal and private networks, um, as well as, you know, we have some teams that just cold call companies as well. The scope of the projects can be anything from market entry to growth strategies, um, <clears throat> a focus on emerging markets, changes to industry structures and how a company might adapt to that. Um, the organizations have been based in, in Canada, but also in many locations around the world, and students have full reign of, of that choice as well, and across a variety of sectors. So everything from healthcare to oil and gas, food and beverage, forestry, transportation, hospitals, um, you know, automobile sector, um, software technology, it really does, it is a, a significant range. I will say that the companies and themselves also range from small startups all the way to you know Fortune 500 companies. So um, again, provided the project that's that's decided upon meets the scope of the assigned uh, course, students can really make uh, decisions that are going to suit them, their team, um, and you know their collective needs long term. Okay, so with that, I know you really came here to hear from students today, so I'm going to give them an opportunity to talk. Um, Shin, we'll start with you, and maybe you could just talk a little bit about your journey pre-MIB, uh, as well as a little bit about, um, you know, your degree path and, and a little bit about your team experience as it relates to the project. Awesome. Um, thank you, Kerry. And um, my name is Shin. I'm Actually, I'm originally from China, then I moved to Peru to do my degree in international business, and then I came to Canada to pursue my master program. Uh, the reason I chose this program is exactly the, the consulting project and all the team-based courses. So I'm doing a single degree, so it's actually um, three semesters, which we have two semesters of full courses and four months for exchange. Uh, for example, I'm going to France to Aim Lyon just for summer school. It's a three weeks uh, exchange. And some of our you know, colleagues, they go, they went for winter exchange and it's four months or maybe a bit longer until from January to June. It really depends on which school and which uh, program you're taking. So regarding the consulting project, um, uh, we find the client, we find the clients based on the personal connection of one of my team, team member. So I know like other teams, they may find the clients um, contacting uh, based on the list provided by the school. And also they post um, a few um, articles on LinkedIn. So just to reach out more companies and to, um, uh, to get the clients for the project. And uh, also for the team, I think, it's very important to connect with the project advisor so that um, we got a lot of re uh, recommendations from his perspective. And also we are, we are actually working with a startup company and the company um, doesn't have experience working with you know, consulting teams and you know, uh, the program like MIV. So we uh, learned a lot from the project, uh, the, sorry, the project advisor, like how to, reach out the company and how to uh, help the company to, to give us a, a timeline and to form um, a work style with the company. And also regarding different deliveries, we got a lot of um, advice from the project advisor. It's very detailed and it's very he's very experienced and giving a lot of details. 
So it's really, really good. Um, it's really, really good and helpful to have a project advisor. The most important is the, I, from my perspective, is the consulting project will appear as an internship on our resume. So this very, I would say very useful if you want, in, uh, you, you want to work on consulting industry after your graduation. And that's why many, it's very popular working in consulting industry after the graduation. It's one of the main career path from the program. So yeah, feel free to ask me any question and I'm really happy to be there. Excellent, thank you, Shin. Uh, Daniel, we'll, uh, we'll maybe go to you and then we'll come back perhaps with, uh, with questions. So tell us a little bit about, um, I guess your journey pre-program and, uh, and then a little bit of your experience so far. Sure. Uh, first of all, hello, everyone. Thank you for being here and uh, joining our webinar. Um, I just want to say apologies for me being in a car. Um, I suddenly had a road trip, so and it's very interesting. So I have actually friends from uh, Italy. We have uh, Poland. We have India and myself, who is from Iran. So this just demonstrates how international our classroom is. We are a car with um, four people, four different nationalities, and we are just having a trip right now. Anyways, um, I'm originally from Iran. I used to live in uh, China for about eight years. I did my undergrad at NYU, New York University, Shanghai campus. So I also lived in New York for a year. And uh, my degree for my undergrad was finance and marketing. And um, after I graduated in 2021, I did work for one full year in Shanghai in an international trading company. And then I decided to pursue my master's program either in the UK or Canada. So I applied for a few places, um, great offers from both countries, but uh, then I actually decided to continue with uh, Queens for a few reasons. One of them was that I actually was very targeted in terms of choosing a location that I can actually relaunch my career and uh, be able to um, find a job that I can stay for a few years. So that's why Canada was very, uh, very interesting location for me. And um, of course, among my offers, Queen's reputation was uh, definitely one of the main things that actually drive me towards coming to Kingston and uh, pursue my, uh, my education in a, in a program that has a very well-defined uh, reputation in, in Canada. I was actually very shocked. I knew Queen's has like a very good reputation, but after I was in Canada and I realized that when I tell and I introduce myself that I'm from Smith, I'm from Queen's University and everybody actually knows and acknowledge that. And uh, yeah, uh, it's, been, it's been, if I wanna talk about uh, the program itself, if anything, it was just uh, beyond my expectations actually. Um, I was a little bit scared to be in Kingston after living in uh, major metropolitan cities, but um, actually I, in Kingston, I would say you find peace for yourself and then being actually with people who actually make this new city a home for yourself is a, is a great opportunity and experience to um, just be out of your comfort zone and experience something new. Now, in terms of um, consulting project, um, as you may already know, uh, you're, you will be assigned by the program office with, to the teams that will be very diverse. There will be people from different backgrounds, different countries, different cultures, different uh, work experience or undergrad education. And um, you get to build that um, community within your own core teams. Um, when in your first semester, you will be taking core courses except the global virtual team that you will be working closely with your um, consulting group. Uh, and that is a great chance for you to actually build more connections with them, get to know their work style, uh, come to have some conflicts and, and resolve those conflicts in advance to, so that you know uh, when you're working with a real client, real company, you don't face similar issues. And um, after that, when it, as Kerry mentioned, in the winter semester is the time that uh, you pretty much you finish your core classes mostly and you're in the in the in a part in the program that you're actually doing strategic thinking you're applying your knowledge your uh, course material the theories that you learn the case practices that you have done to your actual consulting project and um, it's a great opportunity because um, you get to work with real clients the way that our team actually found a client was through one of my Canadian teammates he leveraged his network and um, he talked to one of his network that 
was in a biofuel um, industry and um, they are not a real startup uh, because they are like mid-sized and they have been working on their innovative technology. They recently uh, got government funds, um, but they have not yet commercialized. And that's where they wanted us to, you know, uh, come in and do some research, um, specifically in the North American market, because they are also an international um, company. They, they work, they're going to work with European uh, clients, Asian clients. But as the scope was very big, we narrowed down to North America, majorly in um, Canada and the United States because of the similarities in the regular regulatory environment. And um, that's where we are working on right now. Um, at the moment, um, my team is dispersed in Singapore, uh, Milan, Berlin, China, and uh, Germany and Canada. So we are really experiencing a global virtual team ever since the winter break started. It would be slightly better after I go to my um, Net uh, my exchange in Netherlands in a in a week or so, and um, yeah, that's what we are working on right now. And we are very lucky to work with a very experienced advisor who had actually experience in the uh, oil and gas industry. Not because we are in the oil and gas industry directly, but his experience is actually helping us to navigate through the primary and the, the secondary research that we are doing. And um, just another fun fact is that he's in Vancouver, so he actually adds up to our time zone. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's been only rewarding and um, challenging at the same time. But I would say for um, students who do not have much experience in Canada, like me, who just entered Canada and is trying to build his career and network here, this is a great opportunity because we know that um, as part of the program, we don't have a co-op or internship because our program is so um, fast paced, but this real life work experience allows you to, you know, actually use it in your interview process, say that, okay, I actually worked with a real client. I worked on a consulting project, no matter which industry you want to work at. I know a lot of people are looking into consulting, but it doesn't really matter as long as you're actually putting in the efforts and working with a real client that you can use it at any time in the future in your career. Excellent. Thank you. God. Thank you both for those excellent introductions and, and insights. You know, you're right in the thick of it right now in the sense of you've got all the heavy lifting that you're doing right now, plus you've got global dispersion. And just to kind of clarify for everyone who's on the call, the idea with the team-based structure is that, you know, you work with the same team through all of your core requirements in the fall, which includes four courses. And the idea is that over that time, you are building trust, you're building a solid foundation, you're gaining insights into the way each other works, because similar to, to Daniel's team, you may very well find yourselves in three or four different time zones across, you know, five or six different countries. And so you need to make sure that you have those strong connections and that you understand the nuances of how each other's wor works such that that doesn't become a barrier given some of the other challenges associated with just the global dispersion of students. Shin, do you know um, what's the dispersion of your team right now? So you're here, I think you've got a teammate in Sweden. Zara's here as well. Uh, Zara is back home in Grenada. Oh, and Grenada. yeah, uh, Johanna and Mafarda, they're in Europe. So Mafarda is on her exchange and Johanna is back home. Uh, I'm in Canada, in Montreal right now, but I've, I'll be in Kingston in a few hours. Right. Uh, and uh, Piyush, it's in Sweden. It's also right. Europe. Yeah, so we are experiencing basically European time zone and Canadian time zone, yeah. I would say. But, but it's still very hard to get a time to do the, uh, to do the team meeting on a regular basis because everyone was so busy and was so hard to get, get a time to have a meeting, yeah. Yeah, and the reality is everyone has different priorities going on because of where they're at in the program. And there's there's beauty to that, but there's also, you know, obviously challenge to that. And that doesn't change as you navigate your career, right? You're always competing with what people have going on in their immediate environment. So maybe um, both of you could just speak a little bit to, you know, and I appreciate that every team has their challenges and, and there's part of, you know, human nature that speaks to that. But maybe some of the strategies that you used um, to sort of help set you up for, for success 
as much as you could prior to the winter semester. I'll just throw that out there if either of you have a comment. Yeah, Daniel. Yeah, so um, I think the best approach is to actually get to know your team as much as you can mm -hmm. in the in the in the sem semester that you're working your core classes. Um, you will be working on the global virtual team uh, course, which will actually lead you through theories and uh, meetings with your team to, you know, set your goals, set how you want to work, what are the operational or logistical uh, things that you are setting as your standard for your team. And then following through that and having real feedback sessions. So what we did with our team was after a month through the program, we did a feedback session 101 among all the team members. And then we did a whole group feedback session to just see what is working well, what is not, who needs to work a little bit more, uh, where are we having misunderstanding? And that was, we actually really established honesty and just critical feedback. We didn't want to actually hurt anybody's feeling. We actually became so close that we had like team dinners every now and then. We had actually drinkings together. So we, we wanted to set apart our work environment and friendship uh, so that we can be very, um, how's it, efficient when we're working on the, on the 901 project. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the feedback session and actually seriously following the global virtual team um, materials helped us so much to um, build those connections and actually set the clear systematic way of uh, going through any assignment, either for our other courses or for the 901 project so that we don't face much problems right now. I, I have to say that actually all the feedback that we received from each other was very well implemented, that we don't actually uh, see those issues that we had in, in the past right now that we are in all these time zones. Excellent. Shane, anything to add there around navigating some of the challenges of just carrying a project of this scale as a team? Yeah, just to aid up a bit, because for um for my team, we actually learned a lot by, uh the first uh, the first semester, because we have all the courses together and we had a lot of team projects and researchers, so we can know each other um more and more and be become closer, mm -hmm. uh from the first from the first uh, semester and every courses we had together, and we try to do more team bonding activities. We went to skip room. Uh, we had team dinner and like Daniel said, we had drinks together and we all have the, you know, um, the parties for the whole program. And yeah, so I think what we took differently, the feedback section, we actually have group feedback section. So we kind of um, try to be more open mind and uh, it's not one to one actually, it's just like we pick one team member, then um, the rest of the team can give the feedback directly to the people, to the member. And we do this for every member in the team and we try to have a balance and try to establish a closer relationship with everyone. So I, um, yeah, actually it works uh, pretty well. It just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, excellent. And so Daniel, you, I think you said, well, Shin mentioned it too, is that you, know, you can identify um, the work that you do on a project like this as internship or as work experience because we don't have a formal one in the program. But thinking about some of the other takeaways that you see yourself using uh, or positioning with a prospective employer coming out of this program, like what would you say are some of the key skills that you're either developing or that you've already developed as a result of kind of this experiential applied learning opportunity? Yeah, um, I think First of all, I had a comment to mention from the previous question. As um, our audience are actually listening, you see that different teams had different approaches to tackle the same problem. There are different ways to do it, but then you actually establish that within your team and follow it. So there's no right or wrong answer, but it's what your team decides to do. Yeah, and um, back to your uh, question in terms of how does this experience relate to the future employment? I would say that... Um, all sort of soft skills, all the questions of, tell me about a situation that you had conflict. Tell me about a situation you had to work online. Tell me about a situation that um, you made a mistake. I think you will experience all those in your 901 project and uh, you really build your uh, soft skills 
at, and at the same time, your some of the hard skills depending on the scope of your project. Um, but for me, I would say that um, the communication piece was very important because you're suddenly working. I have worked uh, internationally before and I have had a lot of international friends, but being in a project for this long, for like eight, nine months is actually very different from what I experienced before. And um, the team is also bigger because we are six people, all different cultures, different backgrounds. And um, being able to communicate effectively and establish trust among your team is what, what actually I realized was very valuable to me personally. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, this will differ from person to person, but then uh, all these skills, soft or hard, they, they, they could be easily applied to any interview situa situation in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I think from my perspective, what I learned the most is how to uh, reach out the clients and listen to them because in real life they really have they really have like more ideas coming up and then I the, our team is expected so every meeting we had with the company they all they always have the new questions the new ideas the new approaches and it's really um sometimes I feel it's really intense and I didn't know that in real life the pro the works um the workplace or the work style would be this you know stressful but um, I do learn a lot from this um, this project, and I do learn how to react uh, faster and how to how to communicate with clients in the way they expect it and in the way we can um, con contribute to to their companies. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very really useful. Yeah, that's a really good insight because it's true, right? I mean, and this is the value of experiential learning because what you learn in the classroom is you know, even with faculty who take a very a practical approach is still somewhat theoretical because you're, you're in this learning environment where now you're moving into this area of practice where the real world impact of, of engaging with people who are busy, who are working, who have all other priorities is, is coming to light and you're learning how to manage that. And Daniel, to your point, you know, some of those behavioral type questions, I remember talking to an alum a number of years ago who said he, his first interview after the program was with PwC, and in his behavioral interview, every single question that they asked him on in that respect, he was able to pull an experience from his 901 project because there's just so many ways in which you're being pulled and stretched and you're growing and developing these skills and having these experiences. So, you know, the best predictor of future birth behavior is past behavior. And when you're able to pull those very real world experiences from your master's degree, it really is a, a way to can very quickly differentiate you from a broad pool of applicants. So I appreciate both of your comments there. Um, okay, I wanna make sure that we get time for questions. So I'm gonna just move on, but we'll certainly hear from our students again. So I wanted to just contextualize the project a little bit in the sense of, you know, how it fits in with the overall degree, which I've kind of shared a little bit in terms of it is a required course. It complements a series of additional required courses in the fall semester. But as you can see, it does span kind of all three, what we call phases or semesters. So um, both Shin and Daniel have chosen to opt for summer exchanges or shorter term exchanges in, the, in phase three, uh, so in the next few months. And therefore, we're here on campus taking electives at Smith in the winter term. But as they mentioned, many of their classmates were actually abroad completing requirements at partner schools during that time as well. So we've got a lot of moving parts in this degree. Um, again, you know, but it's always amazing to me how quickly the bonds form and how tight of a community is connected. And that is the same, it was the same through COVID. There is just something that happens when you bring like-minded people together and challenge them in this environment that really, um, establishes really close-knit connections. Um, now, in addition to students who complete our program, we do have a series of double degrees, which you'll see highlighted on this slide as well. And some students do the, the first part of their de double degree abroad 
before they come to Queens, some do it after. And that can really vary depending on your path. I do see a question that's come in through the chat asking about whether the consulting project is the same for our inbound double degrees. And the answer is yes. Everything within the context of that purple, the lighter purple section is completed by all degree earning students. Um, we also have exchange students that come in for just a semester and take courses with us, but they don't earn our degree. Our inbound students from our double degree partners will complete the same requirements typically as our um, single degree students. And then we also have a community of students who come in through the Queen's channels and complete a second degree as well. So again, when I spoke earlier just about the way that the program has been built and designed to really align with a specific passion or, or purpose or goal that you have for yourself, there is a lot of ways that you can design and personalize this experience. Um, so one of the things too that we didn't really talk about is that your team will consist not only of students from different cultures and students who are going to be in Kingston or out of Kingston at different times, but are also in different degree paths. So some of them have yet to complete a second year abroad. Some have already done their first year at a partner school and are now completing requirements here. Some are doing a thesis. Some have internship requirements. And so Again, when you talk about the layers of uh, priority that you're working with and working through with others, it really is about finding that balance. But at the most important thing, I think, is establishing that really strong sense of trust among you and your team members such that you know, regardless of what your priorities are, you're all working toward that common goal, which is delivering the best possible product for your client. So I don't know, Shannon Daniel, if you had any comments about you know, just the way, the different ways that students are completing the program and how that may impact or benefit kind of your overall learning experience. And just one thing I wanted to add is that um, when you come to your second semester, you will have a lot of opportunities to choose different electives. Mm -hmm. So I know that um, because this is not a finance, master's degree in finance, or this is not a master's degree in marketing or strategy, but you actually have the opportunity to focus on those uh, particular areas of business in your second semester. I know that some of my uh, classmates who are interested in investment banking, then it, they take like multiple finance courses in the second semester. So uh, this is just one thing I wanted to add on to what you mentioned, Carrie. Yeah, that's a good point. The electives, whether they be completed here at Smith or abroad, again, further allow you to specialize and personalize your degree and take courses that align with your long-term goals, as does the double degree, because many of the degrees that we're partnered with in terms of the double allow you to do a deeper dive in a particular subject area. So while our pro program tends to be a little bit more broad, even though it has that strong international connection amongst all of the courses, um, you can do courses in marketing and finance and strategy and negotiations and sales. So it really does give you that well-rounded business education, uh, but then the, the elective choices that you make enable you to sort of craft a little bit more subject matter expertise in a particular area. Okay, so I wanna just take a moment um, to, uh, we, I see we've got some more questions coming in, which is great. And um, I'm going to take a moment, though, to turn it over to my colleague, Carrie, who will talk a little bit about the admissions process um, and sort of what the next steps might be if you're interested in the program. Great. Thanks, Carrie. So as Carrie mentioned, my name is Carrie Fraser, and I'm the application advisor for the Master of International Program. So my role is really to work with all of our applicants throughout the application process and help them create a really strong application file to present to the admissions committee. So we are looking for candidates who have strong communication and interpersonal skills. We want to see candidates who show strong leadership skills, strong ethics, and candidates who are really eager to work as part of a team. Um, as we've mentioned uh, over the session, the program is very team-based, so we are really looking for candidates who thrive working as part of a team environment. And of course, we're looking for students who are really curious and eager and really excited to learn about different cultures, who are interested in working with individuals from other backgrounds. As our students have said, not only do you get that international experience when you are an exchange, 
mind, but you also get that international experience sitting in the classroom here at the Smith School of Business. So there are several components to the application process. You're not required to submit all your pieces to get at one time. We will work together over time to build your application file and I will get, guide you through each step of the application process. So we do work on a rolling admission basis. So what this means is as I receive each piece of the application file, I'm in touch to make sure you're aware of the next step in the process. And then once your file is complete, we schedule an interview and your file is then reviewed by admissions committee and you typically receive a decision within about 10 business days. So we do that rolling admissions basis. So in terms of admission requirements, we are looking for applicants to complete an undergraduate degree in business. Now, if you have to complete a degree, but not in business, you would be required to have the following four business courses. So we're looking for intro to market, marketing, intro to finance, macroeconomics, and financial accounting. If you do not have an undergrad in business, you would of course need to submit a competitive GMAT or GRE score. If you do have a business degree, but you haven't maintained a B plus or a 3.3 GPA in the final two years, you would be required to submit a GMAT or GRE as well. So all of these detailed admission requirements can be found on our website. So uh, just to clarify as well, work experience is not required for admission to this program as this program is designed for individuals to do in the early stages of their career, either right out of undergrad or within two years. So in terms of specific pieces of the application file, uh, the first thing that we ask candidates to do is they can simply submit an application form directly from our website. You can also submit resume and unofficial copy of your transcript directly from, your website, from the website. And from there, what I can do is conduct a preliminary assessment to determine suitability for the program. So a couple important notes about your resume uh, if you are applying to the program. If you do have any work experience, please include that on your resume. We also really encourage candidates to include any travel or exchange opportunities on your resume, include any intern experience, anything like that that you think that will really help, uh, help you stand out and differentiate you from other applicants. That's really important to include on your resume. So in terms of other application pieces or items, we do need to see references. So we are looking um, for two references, and this basically tells us others' perception of you, how they would see you working in a team, and how they would see you benefiting from the program. We do also ask that you submit a cover letter, and this is really your chance to introduce yourself to the admissions committee. So in the cover letter, we're looking for you to outline skills you bring to the program, why you decided to apply to this specific program, and how you really hope to leverage this degree in your future career. The other aspect of the application process is a video essay. So this is done on an online platform. You'll be given three random questions. You have a short amount of time to prepare your answer, and then you respond on camera, and then the video is, uh, then I then receive the video. So it's really important to remember that the, the video essay is just one component of the application process, and the admissions committee is looking at the overall application package. So as I said, it's my job to help our applicants walk through the application process, let you know what's next, what's required, and really help our applicants put together a really strong admission or an application file to put forth to the admissions committee. So if you are interested in applying to the program, it's really simple. The first step, you can just go online, uh, complete the application form on our website. There's no obligation or um, fee to do so. And then from there, I would be in touch and I could discuss next steps, uh, help you walk you through the application process and go from there. So looking forward to hearing from you. And if you have any questions, certainly reach out. Awesome. Thanks so much, Carrie. Um, so I do see that we have some questions come in and certainly our students are here today as well. If you have specific questions for them or about their journey, consulting project related or not, um, but we'll jump into to some of them that have come in here already. So the first one is what are some of the most non-traditional locations that students have been able to secure clients for the consulting project? And I don't know, Shannon Daniel, if you know of anyone specifically who's working with a company that's located in what you would classify as an obscure kind of destination. I do know that we've had teams that have been working with, you know, small startups um, or even medium-sized companies in, in small communities in Asia. I remember a team a few years ago that worked for a company in Malaysia, um, in South America, 
We do have a lot of students that work with um, small firms as well as all the way up. We've had students that work for companies like Volkswagen, Disney, Virgin Airlines. Um, so it really is such a broad range and it really comes down to you know, what connections might exist within the context of the team members, um, but also the goals of the team in working with a big company and or a small company and both have advantages and benefits. You know, sometimes working with a very large organization, there's a lot more red tape in getting access to the information you need to really, you know, provide uh, valuable insights. Whereas working with a small firm, maybe you have a little bit more autonomy and leeway. Um, but, you know, there's drawbacks and benefits to either. So I don't know if either of you have anything to add on that front. It really, I'm, I'm sure you've talked to other teams. There really is quite a range of types of companies and locations that, that they're working with. Uh, regarding this question, I actually have no clue because uh, our team is working with a company located in Germany. Based Germany. on, yeah, in Germany. So I think a few teams they're working with Canadian firms as well yeah okay so okay. that's all I know <laughs> yeah no okay that's fine that's good so hopefully that gives you some insight um you know I think what you need to take away from this is that really it's a discussion and a negotiation that happens with you and your teammates I will say that we as a school also have projects that are posted for teams to apply for. So we have companies and alumni that come to us and say, we'd love to have an MIB team work with us. So they post a project and so students can reach out to that company. Sometimes there's a competition. Sometimes, you know, it works out that the team initiates a conversation with the company and then realizes that maybe it's not a good fit. And that's again, where the advisor can play a bit of a role on that client management side. Um, but it really is the team's, responsibility to secure a project. We've had teams that have created beautiful brochures and blasted them out on LinkedIn um, as a way to showcase, you know, just the diversity of skills and experience that exists within the team. And oftentimes teams end up with kind of more business than what they know how to do with. And then that's another negotiation of how do you navigate those conversations with clients. So lots of fle lots of flexibility in terms of who you work with um, and where they're located. Okay, um, I'll just maybe, there's another question here about uh, what types of companies, and again, hopefully you got the message that there's a lot of flexibility there. You know, this is a, this is pulled, a lot of companies, because of, you know, non-disclosures and things, don't necessarily want us broadcasting that they've worked with a team, but we can certainly pull some insights historically from the companies that have worked with our, with our students. And they range in anywhere from healthcare, oil and gas, the federal government, manufacturing, marketing firms, green energy, finance, sports leagues, uh, food and beverage, forestry, transportation. Um, so it really is a broad range and will be a conversation that you and your team will have in the fall. Yeah, so another great question. Are there facilities available to students to help connect with some companies within Queen's corporate networks? And absolutely. So our, we have an experiential learning team that showcases the program project to their clients and to their connections. We also have an internal um, networking app called Smith Connect, which you can also leverage to connect with potential clients. LinkedIn is a very valuable resource. And then, like I said, we often have companies that have either worked with a team in the past that have come back and said, you know, we have another project available or alumni that know the value of what the teams can produce. And so they shop that within their organization and then come back. Uh, I think we had PwC that did that this year. So we have actually a consulting project with a consulting company this year for one team. So um, definitely leveraging the Queens network is a big part of that um, resource. Uh, is there an employment report? Yes, there is employment statistics located on our website. Um, we're just in the process of updating those for the class of 22, because I think it's still the 21 data that's up there, um, but it is available on our website. So I'd encourage you to check that out. Um, okay, so there's a question here. Um, if you're an incoming double degree student who hasn't yet heard about your offer of admission um, and can it be rejected 
So there's always a possibility, I guess. I think we do have very strong relationships with our double degree partners and a very strong understanding of what it means to be successful in this program. So it's very, very unusual that we wouldn't have a double degree student who was formally accepted into MIB. I know that the deadline for all incoming students who've been nominated is uh, later this week, I think Friday or Thursday. Um, and so at that point, everyone will be in receipt of follow-up information regarding your admission into the program. So if you haven't heard anything and you were one of those great candidates who submitted everything right away as soon as you were nominated, that's fantastic and we appreciate that. But formal communication will come from our international office um, once the deadline is closed. And then at that point, all of you will be introduced to our team to start the onboarding process for the fall. So hopefully that clarifies things a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> some great questions there, folks. Thank you very, very much. Hopefully that was insightful. I am just conscious of the time. And so I wanna just put a reminder out there that if you are interested in the program, we are still recruiting for our fall intake. International applicants, um, your timeline is far more limited simply because of processing times for visas. So if that applies to you, just be mindful of that. There are different ways you can engage with us via our website. We have a great introduce yourself function um, that enables you to submit just your resume and a tr an official transcript. That then comes to carry for the purposes of that preliminary assessment and gives you some insight about next steps. So highly encourage you to do that. Please engage with us. We're definitely excited to hear from you. Daniel, I think we lost maybe due to some technical um, difficulties as he's traveling. But Shan, I just want to say a great big thank you to you for your contributions today. Um, Shan's getting excited because she's heading out to France in, uh, in a short amount of time to finish out her degree. Uh, and then we look forward to welcoming her back uh, when she's done. So thanks again, everyone, for joining us. Uh, great opportunity. Thanks as well to Carrie for your insights uh, and support for the program. Thank you again. Have a great day and please reach out.